the cliff analogy of health. Based on the article, Addressing the Social Determinants of Children's Health, a Cliff Analogy, by Kamara Jones, Clara Jones, and Geraldine Perry. One day, a person was out for a walk. This person fell off a cliff and got seriously hurt. Some people heard about this and said, we really should put an ambulance at the bottom of this cliff to catch people when they fall off, treat their injuries, take them to the hospital, and get them medical care. And so for a while, there was an ambulance at the bottom of the cliff catching people who fell off the cliff and got injured. And then somebody said, maybe we should put a net halfway down the cliff. The net could catch people when they fall off the cliff and stop them from getting all the way to the bottom where they could get seriously injured. Some people might slip through the cracks, but for the most part, we'll be able to catch a lot of people before they get injured. And so for a while, there was a net halfway down the cliff to catch people who fell off and an ambulance at the bottom of the cliff to catch people who slipped through the net and got injured. Then somebody said, maybe we should put a fence at the top of the cliff and that fence can keep people from getting close enough to the edge to fall off. And so there was a fence at the top of the cliff to keep people from falling off, a net halfway down the cliff to catch people who got past the fence, and an ambulance at the bottom to treat the people who slipped through the net. This is like the current medical model in the United States. We have a fence, which is primary prevention, which is designed to prevent illness from happening in the first place. We have a net, which represents secondary prevention. Sometimes we call these safety net programs. These are designed to catch a disease early in its course and keep it from getting worse. And we have tertiary prevention, which is medical care and specialized care. Here we're concerned with treating illness and keeping it from progressing, as well as managing the symptoms that might come from that illness. If we want to use cancer as an example, primary prevention would be preventing cancer from occurring in the first place. Secondary prevention would be catching cancer early in its course through screening programs such as mammograms, and we catch it early enough so that we can apply effective treatments before the person is too injured by it. In tertiary prevention, with cancer, we would see chemotherapy and other specialized treatments, as well as managing the other symptoms that might occur, such as pain. But what if we could actually move people further away from the cliff and keep them from getting close enough to fall off in the first place? What if we looked at the social determinants of health, the things that impact people based on where they live, work, and play? We could look at the neighborhood that they live in, is there a safe space for children to play or is there a crime and they have to be concerned about safety? Are there sidewalks for people to go exercise? Do they have access to healthy foods or is it a food desert where the main foods are junk foods and they don't have access to fresh fruits and vegetables? Do they have access to transportation to get to work and to get to doctor's appointments? Safety programs designed to detect cancer early won't have any effect if people don't even have transportation to be able to get to the doctor's appointments. By looking at the social determinants of health, we can address these before the illness even has a chance to start. We can keep people further away from the cliff and keep them healthier. The end. <laughs>